Right, hello again. Um, I'm still waiting on tools, um, but I'm just mucking about anyway, uh, again preparing things and just getting my head around what I'm going to have to do. Right, as you can see there, I've uh, displaced the throttle body and got that all out of the way. Um, there was one thing I was really worried about, because you have to find uh, TDC, top dead centre, um, in order to... You don't actually have to, but you should um, only take this head off at top dead centre. I was a bit worried that I might not be able to get to top dead centre because there's obviously a foreign object or objects in the uh, combustion chamber. But I've turned it over a couple of times. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can either put it into gear and turn the back wheel, which is awkward because I'm on my own, or on this bike anyway, this different ways to do it on different bikes. I've taken off the front cover and that is, this is the accessory or alternator belt that goes up to the alternator above it and this rotates with the crankshaft of, of the engine so you just get a spanner on that and you can turn the engine. What I've done you then basically look at the operation of these two sets of valves. These are the inlet valves for the fuel. These are the outlet valves for the exhaust. With this, there is movement there, which means those valves are closed and they close the other time. What I did, just for a bit of a check as I was going, I've got this little needle and I just put that in to touch the cylinder head. And uh, when you crank it in, you can see this needle basically go in and out. So you know pretty much where top dead center is. I'm not worrying about scoring the uh, face of the piston with that little needle because, uh, yeah, there's gonna be considerable damage uh, that's there already. Right, I was basically twiddling my thumbs a little bit um, because I've got nothing really to do until I got this TDC tool. Um, so I've made my own. It's a little bit rough, but it's um, but it should work. Um, it's really just as a confidence checker. Um, I may just go go ahead and, and use it and not bother uh, using the one that I've ordered. But uh, yeah, it's it's quite simple. You've got instructions here which give you basic dimensions, and uh, I've just cut a bit of bar. I had to heat it up with map gas and bend it. Uh, but the end has to be 5 mil. Uh, the, the shank of it should be 8.5 mil. Uh, this is about uh, 6.8 or 7 mil shank, but that shouldn't make any difference. It'll still pass through the clutch, which is what it's supposed to do. And the end will hopefully locate into the TDC hole. So um, I'm going to see how that goes. <sighs> Right, it's very difficult to see. You can just about see that, that in there, I think, can you? In that hole up there. Where is it? Yeah, you can just about see that. Yeah, the tool I've just made works fine. I've checked the crank at the front of the engine and it doesn't move. Okay, so... um. Uh, it's locked, it's totally locked, so um, I'm just going to crack on now. Right, <clears throat> I've now got the cylinder head off. Uh, check this out. That is the cylinder head. There is obviously some, you can see here, I'll move this a little bit. You can see there, that's one of the exhaust valves has obviously been broken off. The other ones are supposed to be fully closed now. I can feel from the rockers that they are closed, but they're badly seated. So that needs a bit of work, but that is uh, reusable. I'll obviously clean it up, dremel down any burrs, but that'll have to be rebuilt probably with, I mean, I may as well just put in all new uh, valves now that I'm here. Uh, the cylinder itself is 
pretty badly scored up but I'll have to dremel all that down to see what the damage is um, but it may it may need a new piston I'll have to have a look at that um, so yeah not great news but it certainly could have been worse um, so yeah I'm gonna have a bit of a play around with those the cylinder head is definitely reusable it's not there's no question about that but it'll it'll involve a, a rebuild of all the uh, the valve well replacement and uh, rebuild of all the um, all the valves which I'm not too fussed about that's um, you know I can I can sort that out like I say the unknown is the cylinder itself um, it may need to be replaced I shall uh, investigate further but uh, yeah at least I know the uh, I know the score now I know the damage right here you go these two fastenings were holding in the uh, cam chain breather hose they're both holding in the same uh, bit of you know the, the flange for the breather hose they're about three inches apart on the outside of the engine as you can see one of them looks brand new the other one I had some trouble getting out it was almost completely oxidized um, you can see that copper slip was not used due to the cleanliness of the one there on the left another year perhaps and I would never have got the one on the right out it came out with loads of powdered oxidization it's rusty um, so yeah uh, I will just replace that obviously I won't use that again but I uh, only just managed to get that one out um, so yeah that again reinforces the importance of your good old mate the copper slip right good morning <clears throat> it's now the following Saturday so a week after my engine decided to um, go bad on me um, and yeah I've stripped the head off um, I've had to go back to work for a couple of days um, which is a good thing really like I say there's no rush for this job and it's given me a bit of time to think and do a bit of research and decide where to go on this and, and what to do um, so I'll take you through what I've decided now um, okay Right, I'll start at the biggest problem, which is the cylinder. It's badly scored. I don't know if it's holed, i.e. if it's gone through or not. But um, I priced up a new cylinder from BMW. It's 260 quid, including VAT. Um, but I bought a second-hand one on eBay, and I'm still waiting for that. But that was 55 quid. I uh, battered him down from 60 so I'm quite happy with that, and that's a bit of peace of mind. I did have a sort of idea of cleaning this up with a Dremel, uh, blasting it down, and then brazing it um, with alloy just to tidy it up. But for 55 quid, um, I'm not going to bother doing that. I'm just going to replace the piston. The piston I've got comes with rings, so I'll have two sets of rings. Um, so, yeah... That is the option, that's what I'm going to do with the piston. Obviously when I change the piston, that'll give me an opportunity to have a look at the sleeves and also to have a quick look at the conrod, because if the conrod is damaged, then it will be a game changer. It will be the big job on this one. Um, for those unfamiliar with this particular type of motorcycle, um, the engine doesn't fit into the frame the bike basically fits onto the engine if i want to take that engine out which i'd have to do to replace the conrod literally the entire bike comes apart back end wheel swing arm subframe everything choom, off the bike every panel you can see off petrol tank off forks off everything comes apart just to get the engine out and when the engine's out then that has to be stripped that is the big job and I really don't want to do that. If I have to, of course, I will. But um, but that will be some pretty major surgery. Um, so, yeah, I don't want to do that. If I can avoid it. One little um, sort of issue that I've got is um, when I took the head off this, 
a valve or bits of valves didn't drop onto the floor below it. A few little bits did, but certainly not enough to constitute a, a, an entire valve. So basically, the valve has disappeared. I thought for a horrifying moment that it had gone into here, which is now covered with a rag, um, as is the tensioner uh, sort of um, hole there. Um, but it does look as if it would be impossible to fall in there. It's much too small. Of course, if it did fall in there, that means I've got it rattling around in the engine. And again, as I just mentioned, uh, this engine, you know, is a pig to get out. And it doesn't have a bottom pan. So there is no way, short of getting lucky with a magnet, of getting stuff out if you drop anything in that engine. Which is why I've got rags. Uh, covering up those bits so I think what's probably happened is the uh, valve got battered up and is in bits somewhere in the exhaust system like I say a few bits did come out but not enough for a whole valve so I'll have to take off the exhaust system and uh, and, and have a check out on that so yeah piston replacement there moving on to the head I, pro I was you know I originally thought oh, I'll just replace all the valves uh, until I found out the price of them. This valve here, one of the exhaust valves, dealer price £117, including VAT. I've managed to buy a spare one, sorry, a second-hand one on uh, Motorworks, which is a, a pretty good online parts supplier, which I've used before, so I've bought one of those. These heads are going to be completely rebuilt. I'll strip them down completely. I'll clean up uh the whole thing clean up the valves reseat them uh just basically do a total rebuild on that and on the other head i'm going to complete that one first get it back on you know all finished and then i'll basically do a job on that obviously with that i won't have to remove uh oh, sorry i won't be touching the piston yeah i don't see any reason for that so um that is my plan basically a complete head rebuild on both of them uh, so yeah um, I'm still waiting on on bits basically piston and valve so I can't really do anything for the time being um, so yeah that's just a little bit of an update uh, I'm gonna have I'm gonna strip take the exhaust off now and see if I can find uh, my missing valve Right, it is time for a brew and a woohoo! Right, you'll have to forgive me for my expression of glee, but uh, there we have it. This is the cylinder head. And it's as smooth as a baby's bum, which I'm extremely happy about. Uh, let me show you what, uh, what I've been doing. Right. I've removed uh, the cylinder now. For those of you a little bit more in the know, don't worry about the massive pry bar. I was extremely careful. I just gave it a very, very careful pry away from the block and it's come out. Um, everything inside the con rod, which connects the piston uh, to the crankshaft, is solid as hell. It all looks good. Um, even the rings look good, which means that I don't think anything got down into the side of the, uh, you know, into the piston liner. It's just the piston that's right old chewed up, which I'm going to take off shortly. And like I said, it's going to be replaced anyway. Um, a few little things with this, this job, for those of you who are going to perhaps be trying it. Um, I nearly got caught out, basically, with this. The... Um, the uh, cam chain tensioner is a two-part thing, two parts here. This screws into the top of the cylinder uh, casing, and then it's got a spring-loaded tensioner which goes inside that. But when you take out this, you're hampered on the left-hand side of the engine, and it actually left the inner balancing on top of the uh, cam chain guide so if I hadn't have noticed that and I'd pulled off the cylinder, this here would have dropped down behind there in that tunnel into the abyss. 
and it would have been a nightmare. So uh, I appreciate the lighting isn't great on this. But yeah, that is off and it all looks good. Well, as good as, as I could have hoped for. So um, we're still top end rebuild. It's not bottom end, which is a massive, massive deal with this. If it was bottom end, I would have seriously considered a second hand engine. I've seen one on eBay for about 800 quid. But that is no longer an option by the way. Well, it's no longer um, even going to be considered. This is top end, I'm happy to say. So, uh, another little tip for when it comes to reassembly. Um, everything to do with the cylinder um, casing itself. I'm putting... This is all cylinder head. This is cylinder. So I'm keeping those separated. Um, so yeah, that is that. I'm going to completely stuff all of those holes with clean rag. So there is no possibility of anything going inside that casing, which I'm going to do now. I've just, I've only just taken it out. So I've just got that little bit of rag there supporting the cylinder, sorry, the piston and conrod, just so that they don't touch the casing um, and, and mark it. Uh, but yeah, that's all gone pretty well, actually. I'm happy with that, very happy. So yeah, this is all good. As far as I can see, um, it just needs to be cleaned up and have new gaskets, etc. So, um, yeah, I'm very happy with that. And I'm not going to do anything else now um, until the cylinder, sorry, people in the cylinder, the piston arrives. I might remove that other piston, but I probably won't. I'll just leave it there, because at least that way I know it's nice and safe and nothing's going to fall into that uh, casing. So until my um, parts arrive, uh, piston and valve, that's me pretty much done now. And it's, uh, this part two can end on that happy note. So that's part two out of the way. I've got to do a little bit of work on one of my other bikes now. That little C90, the blue... I'm having uh, some chain length issues on it, so I've got a slightly small, smaller sprocket, a rear sprocket, so I'm going to muck around with that now and do another few little jobs I've got going on at the moment. So, yeah, uh, thanks for watching again, and I shall see you all in part three, where this saga will continue. I shall see you later. Goodbye.